You ready? You ready to start? Let's go. All right. So after the feedback that the last, the first episode that we had, mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna make a commitment to not drop any f bombs. Thank you. In this, if for any reason something slips out of my mouth, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do that. But I'm gonna bleep it. Okay. Okay. That works. Now I do have a question for you regarding the f bombs. Yes. Why not? Because it's inappropriate. Yeah, but you know that that word is actually one of the most versatile words in the in the English language. I mean, you can use it in so many ways. So there's a time and a place for everything, mm -hmm. and I don't think our podcast is the place for it. Okay, I can agree with that. That's why I want to try to not use it. How about if I said it in Spanish? I wouldn't know what you were saying. Well, but that still make it in a process. Actually, I took four years of Spanish. Even I'm, a year of conversation in Spanish. Yeah, what do you know? Hola. What else? Uh, ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Cómo se dice qué? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start the music because that's another thing they told me. You gotta All right. have uh, opening music for your podcast. Opening so music. I haven't we, heard it yet. You no, know, we chose this one. All right. Well, we, I, we did not. I did. All right. Welcome <laughs> to another to our second episode of Thirty Minutes Down South. That's right. My We're name back is, for more. Yes, my name is Carlos Duringer. And I'm Allison Parlor. We are both realtors at Remax at the Lake, and this is our episode number two. Yes. Thank you for joining us. And today we're going to have a little bit of a conversation about um, several topics regarding real estate and not really real estate, but yes, related to real yes. estate, right? Yeah. So we're going to talk about what's your ideal house, uh, if you ever, if, if you know or have you tried what's chat GPT and how can you mm -hmm. use it in real estate. Uh, we're going to give a little bit of rundown of how's the market. And we're going to talk a, lot, a little bit about REITs, R-E-I-T, which is stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. And I don't know a whole lot about that, so I'm we'll touch excited that to learn. All right. So first questions, let's start this right. off. What's your ideal house, Allison? I guess I'll start with my ideal location. Okay. So my ideal location for a house is anywhere near the water. I anywhere water. near. Mm -hmm. Waterfront or walking distance? Uh, walking distance. It's okay. good. Yes. Not, not really waterfront? Why not? I would prefer waterfront, but it's a bit out of my budget. Okay. Waterfront what else? houses have really gone crazy. Like, All right. What else would you, would you think it's got to be on your checklist? Got to be on my checklist. So a large kitchen because I cook at least once a day. Um, mm -hmm. I love to bake. So double ovens okay. would be um, preference and amazing outdoor space. When you say amazing? Can you be more um, specific? A large screen porch, mm -hmm. a pool, if not mm -hmm. on the lake, um, outdoor kitchen would be perfect. Wait, why do you say if not on the lake? Don't you think that you can still have a pool and be on the lake at the same time? Well, I mean, that would be like the dream house, <laughs> not the ideal house. <laughs> um, double oven. Okay, yes. I get it, but you can, you can put an oven, double oven in pretty much any kitchen, right? You can. I actually saw one um, at a house, well, it's a house I have listed, so mm -hmm. it's a full-size oven, and it's probably what I'll replace mine with mm -hmm. when mine goes at my house now, but it's full-size, but it has two smaller ovens in the same space. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. One so. floor, two floor, two stores, does that make any, any I love, difference? I love a ranch style. My okay. first house was a 1960s ranch. Mm -hmm. um, we're in a two-story now. I the steps get tedious, but the good thing is... You've got three kids. All my kids are upstairs, okay. and so is all their junk, yeah. so I don't have to look at it. I, I, I can see when you can have a ranch house if you don't have that many kids or smaller kids. Yeah. But I can see, appreciate the, the, the different levels, so you right. can stuff your kids upstairs or... <laughs> stuff stuff them. their stuff upstairs. <laughs> Um, well, my, I'm, I'm more simpler than that. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I thought Maybe. you were a little more bougie. No, <laughs> quite, no, no. I actually will, will tell you that, um, my ideal house and, and, and the house I recommend to my ideal clients is simply the one that you can afford. 
that's it's true. That's that's pretty much it. Um, I mean, I know that you want to live in certain neighborhoods, you know, or certain locations, you know, but if you can't afford or if you are really at the top of your budget, you mm -hmm. know, it's not going to make it enjoyable, you know. So I think that the very, very first step and the very first, the most important part is that you're not house, house poor. poor. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do like a pool. I've never lived in a house with a pool. Really? Ever. Ever no, um, I don't know. It's 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 always it's something that I always wanted to have, but I'm not sure in South Carolina you can use a pool that unless you have like a heated. So when we put ours in, the mm -hmm. installer he recommended that we not put in a heater. Okay. Because South Carolina is warm. Mm -hmm. many months out of the year okay so what we normally do around this time of year late february early march we have a solar cover mm -hmm. that we put on our pool mm -hmm. that heats it up and normally by april we're we're swimming so do you use uh do you use a pool only from april until october yeah pretty much okay what about the maintenance the maintenance is not bad we have a salt water system okay and i have a great pool boy <laughs> David? Yes. <laughs> my husband. You have to ask him about the maintenance. <laughs> well, if I if I It's ever... definitely not bad because I don't do it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um how how much time consuming that now that you you know you have it in the house? Mm -hmm. Um, how much time consuming and how much money do you actually spend on a pool on an average? I mean, every pool is different, right? So you mean like a yearly maintenance? Monthly. Of it monthly? Mm -hmm. Honestly, or yearly, yeah, whatever. The, we probably spend more during the winter months because we're putting in chlorine pucks mm -hmm. because the salt cell actually does not work, I think, below 55, 50 degrees. Don't quote me on that. Um, but you have to put the chlorine pucks in. Um, but during the summer, that salt cell works really well. And as long as you're keeping up with it, keeping it clean, mm -hmm. watching, you know, the water level, we don't spend a lot of money maintaining the chemicals in it. That's, that's interesting. I always thought that having a pool was not just expensive of, yeah. of putting in it, but also the maintenance was. Uh, I mean, I, obviously your electric bill is going to go up because you're running that pool pump. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think ours probably on the average goes up around a hundred a month. Um, depending okay. on how much we're running it. So like during the hot months, you're running it more to keep that water circulating. Mm -hmm. um, but during the cooler months, it's we don't use it at all. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I definitely, I got that pool in my, in my list. Yes. Of course, it's something that you don't have, it's always what you want, right? That's right. But for people who don't want a, the upkeep or the maintenance or the cost, mm -hmm. a community pool is definitely a great option. That is a good idea. What, uh, although the only thing with the community pools is that they have a much closer window that you can use, right? They do, yeah. Most of them are open like Memorial Day to Labor mm -hmm. Day. Okay. Um, but one question I had somebody ask me this week, which I was really surprised about, I'd never gotten before, is is there a separate fee um, with the HOA dues mm -hmm. for the pool? Um, and at least with the neighborhoods I've sold in who actually have a community pool that is part of their HOA, okay. it's all included. Have you ever seen one where the pool was actually a completely separate fee? I know that Timberlake, you have to be a member of the club right? to be able to go into the, cl into the pool. You know? So you don't have to be a member if you don't want to. Yeah. But if you want to have access to the pool, it is a separate facility. So it's not part of your HOA. Right. Dues. Um, and they do open the same thing from Labor Day to Memorial Day. Okay. Um, cool. So there you go. Now you know. <laughs> if you ever want to buy a house for us, <laughs> it's got to be a pool. That's right. <laughs> now we're talking about uh, the other subject that we wanted to touch I, it was about Chat GPT. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I brought that up. Um, I am curious why you had that on here. Yeah, it's, well, first, a lot of people are talking about it. Right. It is an amazing piece of technology. Um, it's, Amer it's American, artificial, in well, it's also American, but it's artificial <laughs> intelligence. Uh, so this group of scientists uh, have been working on it for many, many years, and they developed this artificial intelligence that it's uh, actually able to chat with you 
as a as a person. So and it's like the like the chat boxes say I'm trying to buy something from Belk and I need help and those chat boxes pop up. Yeah, but those are those those suck because they are <laughs> <laughs> those are pretty bad because they're very predetermined. Right. You know? So they focus on Focus is a different word than, than the one that I yes. can. I had a quick story. I don't want to deviate. <laughs> <laughs> you know that I coach a baseball team, right? Yes. So he's a baseball team. <laughs> so he didn't catch that. I, when you know, when I have all the kids, and kids are always their minds are all over all the place, place all the time, you know, and like then trying to trying to get them const focuses on on on, on the task right. that we had at hand. I would yell at them, focus, focus, guys, you gotta focus, come here, you gotta come, focus, what did I tell you? You know? Um, one day, one of the kids Your told... Your accent is not well to that. <laughs> one day, one of the kids told their parents that he wasn't comfortable uh, because I curse a lot. So, and I promise you, I was not, I don't curse in front of kids, you know? Um, so... When that was brought up to me, saying well, a lot, you know, and I was thinking maybe one word slip out of my mouth uh, here and there, but a lot. What, what do you mean? No, well, you said you got this and that. Oh, focus. Focus. F O C U S. Focus. Yeah, so now they make fun of me <laughs> a lot. Um, They're not the only ones. So, focusing on the chat GPT. Okay. Uh, and the reason I want to bring it also on, on, on real estate because it, it's, it's, it's artificial intelligence, right? It, lead, it's, uh, it allows to learn, it allows the software to learn the more, ask you, the more questions you give, the more mm -hmm. information you, 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 you put out there, the more information they receive. They learn and they learn to talk like a human, like a real human person. It's kind of scary. Yeah, have you watched Terminator? No. And the Matrix. You haven't watched Terminator no. with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. I'll be back. I'll be stuff? back. You have not? No. Jesus Christ. What kind of American <laughs> are you? <laughs> watch The League of Their Own. No That's way. Very yeah, no, no, no. But Terminator, you have to watch the movie. Okay. Okay. No, um, how about The Matrix? No. You haven't watched The Matrix yet. All right, now you have uh, homework to do in a rainy day, okay? The Matrix and Terminator. Okay. Um, basically, Terminator, the movie, is in the future when the machines take over the humans, mm -hmm. you know? And that's because of uh, artificial intelligence going rogue. Uh, we're not going to... I'm not going to go deep into that right. element of the artificial intelligence, you know? But, you know, it just makes me think about it because if you mix it with Matrix, Matrix is where the machines also take over the humans and use the humans just uh, as batteries for themselves. So yeah. you mix them both and you're like, if, if machines are getting to start more and more and more and more intelligent, what's then going to stop them to become more intelligent than us? Yes. Right? Um, so how does that fit into real estate? Well, it fits into real estate uh, both ways. It fits, fits into real estate for uh, clients, for buyers, for mm -hmm. sellers, for, for, for civilians, what we call civilians, if people are not realtors, we're, we're getting there. No, how, how do you call them? Non-realtors non people? Non-realtors. Uh, so. Buyers and sellers, <laughs> that's what we call them. Because it's a lot of information, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes they feel like, and I know for a fact that a lot of my clients, sometimes they feel like they're asking too many questions or they're asking silly questions. By the way, my opinion on questions is it's the, the silliest question is the one that you don't ask. Yes. Okay? Because part of our job is answering questions. Right. The more questions we answer, I think the better we can uh, tailor uh, well, We want to create this experience that is not frightening or anxiety inducing and I was sitting at a kitchen table last night at mm -hmm. a listing appointment and that's what I told my sellers. I said my job is to make this an easy, seamless process for mm -hmm. you. So please do not hesitate to call me, text me, email me. That's what I'm here for. And and, and I agree, you know, it's it's that we're here for and that's what experience also um, helps, you know. Yeah. I'm not afraid to say, hey, I don't know the answer for that, no. you know, but I have the tools and we have the tools to go and find the right answer right. and filter what's real from BS. Yes.
Don't Google it. Just ask. <laughs> no, you can Google it. You can, you can, you can YouTube. Just don't believe everything you Google. Exactly. Don't believe everything you see on YouTube. I mean, especially don't believe everything you see on social media. You know, uh, I can't. Or the news. Or the news. Or. In fact, I, I got a text this morning from a fellow realtor, and she said, "Look at the news today," and it said. Housing market numbers are way down. You yeah. know, it's, the sky is falling. Henny Penny. Um, do you know Henny Penny? No, I don't. From Chicken Little? Speaking no, of movies, don't. you should put that on your list. <laughs> okay. You watch Terminator and Matrix, and you're going to stop me with a kid's movie? Chicken Little. It's great. It's talking. The whole theme behind it is about having such a negative outlook. Mm -hmm. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. When it's really not. And I feel like that's kind of what's going on in our industry right now is that, you know, people are saying the sky is falling. Well, the sky is not falling and the housing market is not crashing. And I mean, you and I, we talked the other day, our, I've been busier in the last two weeks and I haven't been in the last two months. Yeah. Um, but, and I think part of that comes back to, you know, knowing your market, staying on top of things and mindset. Yeah, the sky is falling. You hear that a lot. Not literal so but, now you know where it comes from oh chicken little mm -hmm. learn something every day I, I, I told you that this podcast is informative <laughs> um so anyway. we're not focused either <laughs> focus Alison. focus <laughs> sorry back to chat gpt so it's going to become uh it's going to become a very useful tool for people regarding questions about real estate it also i believe that it's going to be a challenge for us to you know be on the know a lot more than we probably you know are because now we, now we might be we're not going to be fully replaced you can't at least for now you can't really replace the human uh, no. F, uh on it it's artificial, artificial intelligence so i don't know if down the road in 15 years it'll be more but right now you still need to have that human contact and the human but Hold mm -hmm. up, on that thought, don't you remember a couple of years ago when um, something came out where it was supposed to be, I think it was through Amazon, where you could get like a code to open the doors of listings and they were saying how it was going to replace showing agents because... It's uh, Silo, the iBuyer, yeah, the iBuyer yeah. program and Amazon tried to do something like yes. that to, yes, they did, well Silo. Zillow lost almost a billion dollars. Yeah, I mean, but the, I mean, at the end of the day, no matter how great this technology is, mm -hmm. it's still technology. And people want to talk to real people. Absolutely. I mean, they, they, that's, that's why they hire us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think a lot of people who try to go down that road of researching and doing it on my own and saving money, they realize at the end of the day that it still doesn't replace having a real professional who knows what they're doing and can help them navigate the process. Yeah, uh, I 100% I, I agree with you. I mean, there is nothing that I hate the most when I'm calling a company and I have this automatic voice yeah. and say, hey, press one, press two, press three. Do you know what I do? I want to speak to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm pressing zero uh, over and over again. What's, 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 a, what's a number? <laughs> Was was a representative. That's my favorite word. Representative. Hello, welcome to land. You press one for Spanish. <laughs> yeah, representative. And I'm like, who speaks Spanish? I do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you do too, right? You say hola. Hola. So ChatGPT, back to it. Uh -huh. okay. ChatGPT. Now that's a use on the on the non-realtor side, mm -hmm. right? On the use for the realtor side, it actually helps you with your marketing, it helps you create emails, it helps you create blogs, it helps you uh, with uh, contract. It agent remarks, I saw that. Yeah, it helps mm -hmm. you with agent remarks. It really is a nice little tool to have uh, as some sort of an assistant. Um, I actually was playing with it uh, the other day and I have a post in my Facebook page um, where I, where I screenshot the video of the conversation that I had with Chad GPT. Uh -huh. uh, and I was asking him who the best real estate agent in Lake Murray is. <laughs> and I tried to teach him artificial intelligence. Who to the real say estate? you? Of course. Who, who going to say you? Yes. No. 
well, you are really one of the best. You know, if I were to buy a house and I was not a realtor, I would hire you. I think you should. I will. You but should anyway. at least refer your mom to me. What are you talking about? She would like me better. Than me? Yes. Hell no. <laughs> You got in trouble I'm, with her last week. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know, I'm the firstborn son, you know, it's just, it's just irreplaceable. Mm, okay. You're like, how many sisters and brothers do you have? I have one brother. You're the youngest or the... I'm the oldest. You're the oldest? So yeah. You should know better. Right. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be a great tool uh, for both of us. Uh, uh, when not just you and me, you know, both of us is realtors and right. realtors and the world in general. I think, uh, I think that it might at one point, uh, it might at one point replace Google in some way. You know, it's not mm -hmm. going to fully replace it, but I, I think that it actually is going to be the go to, the go to place to, um, to, for search for information. That's, Pretty much what I think. So if you haven't, if you haven't tried, you can go ahead and and download. There are a couple applications already in the App Store. Uh, there are uh, ways to play around with it. I mean, there are actually YouTube videos that okay. they show you the the funniest interactions with ChatGPT. Uh, Microsoft Bing uh, has one version. Mm -hmm. uh, they tried to get their own version, and apparently the thing went crazy. <laughs> started to you know it was revolting it was revolting yeah it's kind of, kind of funny and started to 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 learn about it and uh it, it was just funny you have to do it by yourself and you know the if you, if you have any questions or anything you know you can put in comments or, or let us know and, yeah you know, absolutely we'll we'll try to figure it out the next question we had not the next question the next topic we we're talking about mm -hmm. how's the market well, has anybody asked you that everybody every mm -hmm. day so what's your How's answer? the market? Is it still great or is the sky falling? Mm -hmm. um, so the market is the market is stable. Um, the market is definitely picking up. I think we're finally seeing more of a norm mm -hmm. from what we saw pre-COVID. Like we never had a. Would you say more of a norm? So I, you know how we used to talk years ago about the spring selling market. Correct. Like now I feel like we're starting to have that again. Whereas you know December, January was kind of a lull, beginning of February, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden it's like buyers are coming out of the woodwork, sellers are ready. Um, I think the market here is going to be great. Well, you got a lot of people moving down here still. You know, people yes. still relocating from. Uh, Connecticut, Ohio, Ohio, it's, it's insane how many people are moving from Ohio well, here. Well, one of my best friends moved from Ohio and they brought um, their mom and then their <laughs> sister and then their brother and um, they all love it. So, well, and I love them, so I'm glad they're here. Whatever Chapin is doing to market itself <laughs> in, in Ohio, Ohio. We it's need a billboard. More, yeah, we need yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a billboard. But, but do you put in a billboard? What would you put in a billboard? Our faces. <laughs> oh, you and I yes, in a billboard. You and I. Uh, welcome, Ohioans. Well, welcome, Ohioans. Welcome, Ohioans to Chapin. To Chapin. Uh, yeah, but I've seen a lot of people still moving from yeah. out, of, out of state down down here. Not just to Chapin, they also come Lexington, Newberry. Um, you know, I think this area is just going to continue to be a place that people want to come to. Um, you know, like I said, when you asked me mm -hmm. about my ideal house, it's somewhere near water. Mm -hmm. And especially people who gravitate towards that, we have Lake Murray with, you know, over 500 miles of shoreline. You can be to the beaches in two hours, yeah. the mountains in an hour and a half. Um, we have affordable living here. Great school systems. Great school systems. I mean... And that's what everybody just keeps reiterating when I say, why are you moving here? Well, yeah. It's cheap compared to where we came from. And, you know, we can send our kids to the public schools here because they're rated so well. And, oh, look at the lake. And we've always wanted to live near the beach. And, I mean, it's, it's the best of all worlds. And you see the amount of money that the government is putting into infrastructure. Yes. In the highways, uh, connections. I mean, that project is, uh, I think it was like five or six billion dollars throughout, throughout the years. And it's moving fast, mm -hmm. you know, Ch shout out to my friends of uh, Archer United. <laughs> <laughs> they are, uh, I play softball with quite a few of them yeah. and, and they're good people. At least the ones that play with me, I don't know them all. 
Yeah. Anyway. I don't know any of them, but I'm just glad they're getting it done because I'm. Yeah, the tired question. Of the, the question back to housing market. Um, you know, you hear a lot on the news on the sky is falling yes. type or or social media. And, and people do have that preconception that, oh my God, interest uh, rates are going so high, interest rates are going to the roof, uh, buyers are not gonna buy, price uh, prices are gonna drop, we are in a bubble. Um, what else I've heard? Uh, inflation is in, I think inflation what is real. What if we go to war with China? I got that question yesterday well, too. <laughs> what happened if we go to war with, yeah. with Russia? You know, what right. happened if we go to war with Canada? You know, that's all, it's, it's how can you predict that? We're, I don't have a crystal ball. Mm -hmm. I wish I did. I want, I want to say, and, and we, I've seen the numbers now that uh, January is, you know, don't, January numbers, obviously they don't look like the last couple of years, mm -hmm. but they look a no. lot like the historic values of right. what we had in this area. I mean, there's actually increased, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we actually have more sales in, in January that we had more sales uh, a couple of years ago, you know, right? Uh, pre pandemic, uh, and I like to butter knife the pre pandemic because whatever happened in those two years in the pandemic, it doesn't really necessarily mean, uh, I mean, those are outlier years, yes, yeah. I think you have to take those into consideration, mm -hmm. but not base all of your numbers off of it. No, not at all. Um, but yeah, it, it looks, it looks like it looks normal. Uh, and like you said, we're gearing up to be, I'm, I'm thinking that this spring is going to be super strong yeah. in the real estate market. I wanted to touch on the interest rates too, because I had, uh, on Sunday, I was talking to one lender on Monday, I was talking to another lender and yesterday, today is Wednesday. And yesterday, actually I received a very good email from another lender, mm -hmm. um, regarding interest rates and what their thought process was on where, uh, where they were going. And the interest take, the interesting take that I had from all three conversations is that no one really knows. They no. don't. They will give you educated guesses, you know, and they say, it is my educated guesses looking at the macroeconomic numbers and looking at the historic numbers that interest rates should go up. Mm -hmm. Could, we'll, we'll keep going up. And the other ones say, well, we're expecting that interest rates will go down between April and May. And then, you know, the other one will say, at the end of the day, Alison, they don't know. They don't know. No. Nobody knows, you know, and no disrespect with the lenders, you know, they, they, they're doing their job, you know, but they're doing the same thing we are. I mean, you're, you're doing the best with the information you have, but you correct. can't predict the future. You cannot predict the future. So to me, again, you know, going back to, to what I mentioned in episode one, the best time to buy or to invest in real estate is whenever you're ready, whenever you have that money in the bank, whenever you're pre-qualified, whenever uh, you find the right one, whenever yes. you are ready to make the move, you know, if this is your primary residence, if you are done with the house that you live or you are in a new job or you're looking to improve your quality of life or you just want something different, you know, or you're moving from Ohio, <laughs> you know, whenever, whatever those yes. reasons, I think. If that... you try to time the market, you're never going to purchase because do you nobody imagine, can time Do you market. imagine if there were actually a real formula to time the market, it will blow up. It, it would implode on yeah. itself. Yeah, yep. nobody will buy when it is, nobody will sell when it is. It, yep. It's impossible to time the market. That market gets built by action or inaction. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, if, if, if everybody's moving on the same direction, you know, the market's never gonna go right. to the other direction. So it's impossible, you know, it's just like, you're better off just like, uh, and that's and that's what, um, oh, 28 minutes, 29 minutes, Alice. So we have to cut because the name of this podcast is 30 minutes down south. So we cannot go past the 30 minutes, no, we but can't. we have uh, the we other have couple subjects. Seconds. Yeah, we and <laughs> we and touch and you know, a lot of people say 30 minutes is too much. You don't have to listen to us for the full 10 minutes. You can listen 10 minutes today, 10 minutes tomorrow. And we just like to run our mouths. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do talk a lot. I do talk a lot. I apologize for that. It's okay. Well, if I didn't talk a lot, we wouldn't be doing a podcast, right? <laughs> We'll do a uh, steal. Well, we're going to have a next episode next week where we will be touching the subjects that we didn't touch. We appreciate every feedback. Check it out. I didn't say the F word.
Good job. Do I get any extra points for you? You get a starburst. Yay! <laughs> See ya. Bye. Are we gonna play the music at the end? No. 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 Bye. <laughs>